So 2K dropped the patch not too long ago and the shooting is completely different. The main thing is they changed the delay in the shooting so it makes it so that everybody's jumper is different than it used to be. Also the contest system is a lot different. People have been struggling to hit their shots, me included, but I found out the sauce. I'm here to help y'all out, help y'all fix y'all shooting percentages and help y'all fix y'all jumper. And some of the things in this video you might already heard, you might already know, but there is some things that you might not know yet and can really help boost your shooting percentage. So make sure you watch the video all the way through so you can get all these shooting tips. Without further ado, man, let's get into it. All right, man, so let's just start off with the basics. First things first, you wanna come over here, you wanna go down to controller settings, obviously, and then you wanna come down and just make sure your meter is off. It gives you a 20 to 25% boost, I don't remember, but it's up there, boost on your shooting percentage. Just turn it off, bro. It's a 20 to 25% boost. It's gonna be worth it. You're gonna notice a big spike in your make increase. And I mean, it's 2023, bro. Like, you, you gotta know how to shoot without a meter, bro. Speaking of shooting without the meter and using a cue, the shot timing visual cue. Now this is where the big changes came recently with this new update. The cues have been kind of altered, right? You got the set point push. I was using set point for the longest and I switched to push. Now the problem is, right, your cues before the latency fix, they didn't actually, they weren't actually your cues basically. So if you had set point and you release it at a set point, it didn't green because it was so delayed. It would release it at the push, right? Same thing with push. If you have push, it would release it on the release. But now since the latency is fixed, it's actually releasing it when it should be released. So if your visual cue is set to set point, then you're actually gonna green if you release it at a set point. Same thing with if you release it when you push. I think that's where the big majority of people are struggling right now is because they're not used to actually having to use their cue with the right way because the cues have been thrown off the whole year because of the latency. But as far as which cue to use, my vote would be push, but set point has now made a comeback it's actually usable now because it actually works beforehand. If you had set point, you release it at a set point. It didn't actually release at a set point. So if you want to use set point, you can use set point. I use push. I would not use jump. Do not use jump. You're going to be struggling. Trust me. And release is super duper long. I wouldn't use release. So either set point or push. My vote goes to push right now. I was using set point, like I said, but push is probably the wave right now. So when it comes to jumpers, I have a lot of options for y'all. This is my jumper right now on my guard. I'm using this the whole year. My six foot three guard, Steph Curry base. Darius Garland upper one, Trey Young upper two, 67-33 split with a very quick release speed. This is the jumper I would use if I was a 6'4 and under guard. You can go with Stockton. Stockton, I feel like Stockton's too fast. But if you want the quickest jumper in the game, Stockton is the way for sure. Also, another really good jumper that nobody really talks about is Kyle Lowry's. I wouldn't use it because, you know, I like a faster jumper, but not too fast. So I'll use Steph Curry. But if you want like a slower you know, just smoother jumper. Kyle Lowry would be the option I would go with. But yeah, if you want my vote, Steph Curry on the base if you're 6'4 and under. Now, if you're 6'6 six, six and above. Also, I'm not gonna lie, Brandon Podazimski, however you say his name, buddy on the Warriors, his jumper is mad smooth. Same thing with KPJ. KPJ is not as good as last year. Uh, you can use it if you want to, but Brandon Podazimski, however you say his name, he got it. His jumper is fire for sure. As you can see, it looks smooth. Let me get on my 6'6 to show y'all the 6'6 jumper real quick. Now, when it comes to the 6'6 jumper, this is the jumper that I threw on originally when I first met my 6'6. JT Thor, Sadiq Bay, Sadiq Bay. Very quick, 50-50. This is probably like the base jumper, the jumper that everybody's going to tell you to use, the quote-unquote meta. I'm not going to lie. If you're struggling with JT Thor, just try out Kobe Bryant. Just try Kobe Bryant. Just try it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you're going to like it, but I feel like anybody that's struggling with JT Thor would really like Kobe Bryant because it's just a smooth jumper. It's a smooth jumper all around, straight up, straight down, not complicated. Like you can see in his JT Thor, he kind of kicks his legs and that throw people off sometimes. Now I understand that everybody cannot get Kobe's jumper. So another jumper I would recommend for y'all is Ignis Brogdasis. Ignis Brogdasis, that name is so hard to say. Ignis Brogdasis is basically base 11 from back in the day, base 11 from back in 2K19. You jump super duper high, super duper quick, and it's a little bit more up and down than your JT Thor. But if you just can't hit with any of those jumpers, the default jumper that you should be buttered with no matter what, no matter what scenario, it's T-Mac. It's similar to JT Thor, but it's just a lot smoother, bro. The release speed ain't crazy fast, so it's not gonna speed up on you. It's got good time and stability, good defensive immunity. You get really high on it. So T-Mac is definitely a great jumper if you're struggling with everything else. And then for the upper releases, bro, just go Sadiq Bay, honestly. Now, if you're a big man and you have a really low three ball, I will go with Andre Drummond. If you're like, you know, like a really low three ball, like 55 to like 70. Anything else, just go with either Eric Pascal or Jonathan Isaac. 
I'm not too, too tapped in with a big man jump shot, so I'm not the best for that. But those are the ones that I know are really good. And then when it comes to the dribble pull-up, I just use Ben McLemore. It's the closest thing we have to the Trey Fade from last year. Kobe Bryant is good if you're 6'5 to 6'10. Also, Bradley Bill has a really good pull-up this year as well. Spin jumper, I just use Trey Young's. It's got the fastest turnaround, fastest spin. If you're 6'6 six, six and above or you're 6'5 and above, just use Kobe Bryant. And a hop jumper, I use Steph Curry. You could use somebody like Paul George as well. He gets some good animations. He gets some step backs, some snatch bags. Kobe Bryant is another good one as well when it comes to the hop jumpers. And yeah, I just use Steph Curry's free throw. And then I know some of y'all might know this, but come to this artist shooting gym right here on the map if you haven't already and just get your hot zones. Just come in here, bro. Come talk to Lethal Shooter. He's gonna give you a workout to do. And if you can get your lethal zones, go grind out and get your lethal zones. I'm pretty sure it gives you like an 18% boost at the edge of your green window between hot zone and lethal zones. So just come in here, go get them, bro. It's not going to take you too long. And yeah, man, just to show you all what I'm talking about, I'm going to release the ball when I'm on my push animation as I'm pushing the ball out. Just so you can see what I'm talking about with the visual cue. So boom, as I'm pushing the ball out, I'm releasing the ball. Same thing where you set point, jump, release, whatever you have on. Just learn that visual cue in the offline modes. And then now with the latency being fixed, it translates over to the online modes pretty well. And I would put my floor setter on a shooting badge. I have my gold floor setter on limitless range just so I never lose it. But with the way that they change the badges now and the progression, you shouldn't really be losing that many shooting badges. And also, if y'all are really, really struggling, come in here, buy some boosts. I know it's as old as it can be, but trust me, just, you know, buy some boosts. It's a psychological thing, in my opinion. You know you have your boost on, you're going to... Think you can shoot better so you in turn you shoot better but i don't think it helps you better at all i'm not gonna lie i will say this just so y'all are aware they changed the contest system so crazy like jumpers that should be open aren't open anymore and now some of the ones that are quote unquote open they feel different because it's a slight contest there so if you're somebody that's taking close out jumpers or contested jumpers off the dribble just be very aware of that now if you want to know how to get open every single time on this game make sure you check out my dribble tutorial video. I'm telling y'all how to get open. I'm giving y'all the sauce. I told you how to shoot. I told you how to get open. I like, shouldn't be struggling. Other than that, though, man, make sure you hit the subscribe button, join the family. We're almost at a thousand subs. I appreciate y'all. Other than that, man, we'll catch y'all next time. Peace.